Aha, the polygraph. What is going on, guys? Today is gonna be a little bit of a shorter video. There's a reoccurring question that I keep getting asked in the comment section is, hey, do you have any tips or any suggestions on what I can do to help better my chances to become a law enforcement officer? Well, today I'm gonna give you guys five tips to help you in your career path to a law enforcement officer. Tip number one, decisions you make today can affect your future. Again, I'm gonna reiterate, decisions that you make today can affect your future into becoming a law enforcement officer. And what I mean by that is those of you guys that are in high school, in college, there's plenty of opportunities in that atmosphere that might present themselves that you end up making a wrong decision or a bad decision and now that affects your chances in becoming a law enforcement later on in life. A couple scenarios that might pop up, maybe you get into a fight, somebody steps on your kicks, you punch them in the face, and now you're arrested for battery. Well, that affects your chances later on in becoming a law enforcement officer. The obvious is a DUI. Those of you that are in relationships, maybe you get into some kind of domestic violence with your boyfriend or your girlfriend, and also reckless driving, or a numerous amount of infractions in a small amount of time, or you have a lot of speeding tickets leading up to the hiring process. So these background investigators are looking at that. And, and one of the reasons being is that as a law enforcement officer or a police officer, you're in your vehicle for long periods of time. Basically, you're driving all shift. So if you get into an accident or something happens, the city or the agency might be held accountable because they let you become a police officer knowing that you have all these speeding tickets and all these previous accidents that you've been into. And now they are responsible. So when opportunities present themselves, just keep it in the back of your head. I wanna become a law enforcement officer. I wanna become a police officer. I wanna put that above everything and make your decisions wisely because they will come back to affect you later on. Tip numero dos, and that is education. Continue it. A lot of you guys ask me, hey, what should I do? I'm going to school or should I just become a cop right away? I suggest you continue your education. And you don't have to go to college to get a criminal justice degree or a degree in criminology. You can get a degree in psychology or business management. Uh, essentially, it, just doesn't, it doesn't have to be criminal justice. It's good, but it doesn't have to be. Now, some agencies only require a high school degree to start, but uh, believe me, if you wanna move up through the ranks, you're gonna need some sort of degree in AA, a bachelor's, a master's. So some sort of degree is needed to move up through the ranks. Now, I say finish your degree before you become a law enforcement officer because once you become a law enforcement officer, it's really hard to go back to school because you have shift work, you have long nights, you might start a family. It just gets a little hectic. It's hard to squeeze in school in that time frame. So if you can finish school first, that's a plus. Uh, and if not, it's still okay. You can go back and figure it out, but it's just gonna be a little bit harder. Number three, you gotta be physically fit. Now, not only to pass the physical agility test, which mostly all police agencies require, some sort of physical agility test. Now, what a physical agility test is, is what it sounds like. You have to run a mile or two miles or whatever it is in a certain amount of time, do a certain amount of push-ups, push a car, jump a wall, sometimes it's a six foot wall, sometimes it's a four foot wall, but in some sort of manner, there's gonna be a physical agility test. So you gotta be ready for that. And once you pass the physical agility test, then starts the academy. And in the academy, you're gonna be pushing a lot. I mean, you're gonna get some nice shoulder chest muscles because all those push-ups. you're gonna be running a lot. Uh, pretty much every day is some sort of PT. And when you're not doing exercise, you're also going to be rolling around on the mats and doing some defensive tactics. It incorporates jujitsu, MMA, uh, all kinds of different stuff. So you need to be physically fit in order to make it through the academy. I've seen people fail out of the academy because either they get hurt or they couldn't make uh, the physical agility tests. So physically fit is a big thing. Uh, I, if you're going into the academy or plan on getting hired and you're taking it serious, that means you should be uh, eating right, you should be running, you should be exercising every day and getting ready because there's people that sign up and put in their application. And I'm like, ah, I got time. They show up on the physical agility test day and 
womp, womp, they fail out because they're not ready. So as soon as you're ready and you have that thought that I'm gonna be a police officer and I'm going for it, you need to start pushing, you need to start running, and you need to start eating right. Number four, when applying for a police agency, you need paperwork, tons and tons of paperwork. So I would suggest getting it ready now and getting that stuff together now. And what is that stuff? Just to name a few off the top of my head, you're gonna need some personal identification to identify who you are, something such as your driver's license, you're gonna need your birth certificate, you're gonna need, if you have a passport, you're gonna need your social security card, and that's just some of the items that you should have ready and start putting and building a file. You're gonna need your high school transcripts, your college transcripts. When it comes to employment, you're gonna need your past employers, uh, their names, their contact information, the addresses to the jobs that you held. You're gonna need your past residence history. So go back and get all the places that you lived at, all those addresses, because background investigators will go back and contact um, your neighbors around there to find out a little bit more on who you are. You're gonna need personal references. I would say to get about five, just get five people that you have, get their names, get their numbers, get their addresses, and let them know that they might have to write some kind of uh, personal reference letter. Uh, give them a heads up ahead of time, and then let them know also that a background investigator might be contacting them. Now the reason I say that, the reason why it's important to get this stuff together now is because you can get disqualified for missing information, wrong information, or forgetting to submit something. You can get disqualified from that and your chances of becoming a law enforcement officer stops right there. You won't even be able to take the physical agility test or make it to the academy. So your paperwork is important. Start working on it now. And lastly, about the paperwork, when an agency opens up, they might have a window or they might have a certain amount of applications that they'll accept. And if you don't enter your application before that, let's say a thousand applicants uh, enter theirs, then you don't make it. That's another reason why. So normally they're gonna announce that they're gonna open up for hiring soon. So they'll give you a heads up on everything that you need. But if you go by what I said, you might have 90% of the stuff done and you only have to do 10% research. So when that day comes, when they say we're gonna open up on this day, you just sit there and waiting. As soon as they open up, send, and you submit your application, and you don't have to worry about getting or missing that window. Very important, paperwork. And number five, your appearance. Your appearance is huge. It's your first impression. It's the first time they're gonna see you face to face. So make sure that you're squared away, you look professional, and you look presentable. Fellas, I love you guys. And I know that beards are in style, and you're not cool unless you have a grizzly beard. But I suggest you lose the beard for the interview when you're applying in person, clean shaven, a nice neat haircut. Uh, doesn't have to be a buzz cut, but something nice and neat, squared away. I mean, if you take a look uh, more or less at the officers walking around the station or the officers that are on duty, you'll see how or what the department is looking for more or less in appearance. So kind of gauge it off of that. Uh, if you're gonna go to an interview, suit and tie, suit and tie, and have some kind of dress shoes on, not suit and tie and vans. So just, just a tip, just a tip, that's all. Ladies, business attire, uh, professional pantsuits, dial it back on the makeup a little bit, just a little bit. You know, none of that nighttime going out to the club makeup. Dial it down one layer, really, really light. Keep it natural. And uh, earrings, if you're gonna wear them, little studs, little maybe little pearls, something small, nothing hanging. And hair back. As a law enforcement officer, you're gonna have to wear your hair back anyways, and in a bun, because when your hair is down in a ponytail, it's easy for a suspect to grab you by the hair, and then they got control of you and then you're in a fight for your life. So they recommend tight, hair back, tight in a bun. So those were just five basic tips that I can come up with. Um, I was sent this book here. It is The Applicant to Police Cadet. This was written by a police officer and this is basically to help navigate you through the hiring process and to help you pick 
whether you want to work at a federal agency, at a local agency, at a county, um, at, a, at a city. So it, it breaks down what's the difference between the different agencies. It also breaks down what to expect, like the psychological, the polygraph, the oral board you're going to have to take, the background that they're going to do, the physical agility test. I mean, it breaks down a summary of what each exercise is comprised of. It also talks about pay, pay rates, uh, pension. These are, this is all important stuff to know prior to becoming a police officer. So it talks about that and it talks about actually showing up to the interview and what to expect when you're at the interview. So good book. If you're considering becoming a law enforcement officer and you want to be well prepared, I suggest you go out and do a whole bunch of research on different um, situations, different scenarios, and this is a tool that can help you. It's the applicant to police cadet. Again, sent in by a law enforcement officer who wrote this book himself. He's a veteran cop out of Texas. Uh, if you guys want to, I'm going to link it down below so you guys can pick it up. Good tool to have. With that being said, look forward to some huge police car episodes coming soon. I mean, these are some doozies. So if you're not subscribed, make sure you click subscribe. Thanks for staying all the way to the end of the video. And now, here's the sign off. I'll see you when I see you. And if I don't see you, then I'll see you.